Welcome to the Wachendorf Projector Tool training. Today we will learn how to install the Wachendorf Projector Tool and we will also make a little tour to learn all the elements of the program. This is what you should have gotten from uh, a USB stick or a CD from us or you have downloaded it from our customer portal. We go straight to the subfolder projector where you see the setup file for the projector tool. Just double click on it to start the installation. Okay, here we have our setup screen. Um, there is a language choice here, but there is really only English at the moment, so just click Next. Some introductory text, also just click Next. You should, of course, read all these lines of our license agreement and then accept them. Click Next. Um, you can, of course, change the default path for the installation of the projector tool. Um, just um, don't install it on a network drive. Always only install it uh, on a local hardware, uh, hard drive. I will keep the, the uh, default installation path. Once again, here you can change the, the start menu folders, but you can just keep them. It's, it's, it should be okay. Then we click install and the installation begins. And that's it. The installation is done. No restart is necessary. And now we will start the projector tool and uh, take a little tour. Here is our splash screen. You can see the loading progress here right there. Let me make this full screen. Okay. Um, to start, before I start the tour, I will quickly create a project because it makes much more sense if a project is open and all the properties etc are filled so I will just create this quickly here we are okay so this is our default uh, layout of our uh, GUI um, let's start on top here we have our menu bar pretty much like in every other program you have your file edit then some special things, of course, um, for, for our program. You have uh, a help menu. This is a very important menu entry. You should use it very often. Um, below that, you have a toolbar. Um, you have new project, open project, save project, save all projects. Um, this is once again a very important button, the quick download button. Um, with this, the selected project will be saved to a USB stick and then you can plug in uh, that USB stick to your device and the project will be transferred. Um, the backup I never really use to be honest. Um, I usually uh, take this away. You can um, change the layout and everything of this bar by right clicking somewhere where there is no uh, element and then you can uh, check and uncheck some of the elements that you need or don't need. Okay, um, here we have the, the current language and unit. This is just for previewing once you set up uh, languages and different units. This is once again very interesting, the peak line simulation. Um, with this you can um, yeah, simulate your project on a peak line that runs on, on the Windows PC. I, I can just show this to you very quickly. Here you have your device. Um, the project of course is uh, pretty much empty because I haven't done anything yet. But here you can test many of the functions without actually having to download the, uh, the program to your display. Or maybe you don't even have a display yet and here you can already play a little bit. Okay, now on the left side we have here the project tree. You see, this is the project I've just created. And if I open this up a little bit, here you see um, all the elements of your project. You also have your alarms. Once we start communication, we will have communication, can communication here. 
and also virtual keyboards. Um, in the middle, the big at the moment empty screen is your main editing window. If I open up the home page quickly, you see a virtual display here. Um, this is where you will do your, your main work. You will put all the objects on the screen and configure them as you need. On the lower left, there's the satellite window, um, a feature that I rarely use. It makes, let me show, it makes a little bit more sense if I zoom because now when I move it like this, I might not know exactly where I am. And here I do know it. And I can also move around the, uh, the preview screen here and it will move in the main editing window. It makes, may make sense more for uh, larger screens, but um, I usually don't use it. And because there will be a lot of information in the project tree on the left, I usually just close this. You can re-enable them uh, in the window menu. Here, for example, the satellite view, there it is again. So if you change your mind or if you find that you need it, um, you can show it later. You can also hide those. Then they will be put here. You can do the same here. And then you just have to click here and they will re-emerge has the advantage that you can get um, a bigger main editing window, but you also have to click every, oh no, you don't have to click. You can also hover on it a little bit, but I usually like to have this um, on screen all the time so that I know where, where I am. So I will uh, dock it again and I will close the satellite view anyway. Okay, so this is our main editing window. On the right side, we have on the on top our properties and events. Right now, we don't really have uh, any objects, so let me quickly put uh, an object here. Oh, I will take a numeric field. Okay, so here on the left, you can see that the the home page is filled. This is the frame that I put in, and then the numeric field. And depending on what object I have selected the properties here will change accordingly and show the properties of that object. So you see here numeric field one and here it's frame one. There is this uh, description field here, which honestly uh, is not very useful because you can see it doesn't matter where I click, it will always show the same entry that is written here in the property itself. So what I usually do is uncheck this so I can see more properties at the same time. Um, the properties are normally sorted uh, in, in different categories. If I close them all up, you can see. Um, depending once again on what kind of object I have. Um, once you get used to this, it's quite nice because you have everything that kind of belongs together um, in the same place. For example, the input configuration, but maybe some rather want to have it alphabetically because once you know what kind of property you're looking for, it's of course easy to find it in, uh, in, an, in a sorted list. So you can right click here and check sort by name. And now you have everything that you need from A to Y. Um, the disadvantage here of course is that they are not sorted anymore. So if I want to, um, if I want to edit all these elements, if I want to make this editable and maybe change some things, I really have to go from top to bottom and look for all the, the necessary uh, properties that I have to change. So this is a little bit depending how you want it. I will keep it in this because I'm really used to it this way. Okay, below the properties, ah no, one more thing. Next to the properties tab, we have the events tab. And here you can configure different actions for all the events um, that the, the selected element has, the selected object. So here for the frame, we only have on press, on release. Uh, for the numeric field, we have of course different things on value change, on enter value, on escape and so on. So depending on what you have, let's take a button here. Um, here we have on press release and also long press, long release and double click. 
So um, here you can you, you can configure what happens if you uh, if if there is an if there's a certain event on on one of your objects. Okay, I've already used it plenty now. So below the properties, you have your object palette. Um, on top, we have the uh, yeah the the most basic object, the frame that is always the first on every page. Um, and also the container to, cr to group objects. We have the button, which is a button. We have uh, a linear and an arched bar graph that you can bend around a little bit to make it more pretty. You have your meter object, numeric fields for numbers, string field for texts, uh, a table object, mainly used for DM1 errors, but you can also with uh, JavaScript use it for your own needs and display any kind of data that fits in a table. You have a 2D graph, you have a list object, which you can imagine like a folder where you put uh, a lot of, uh, for example, a lot of icons and you can select which icon you want to show at any time. And last but not least, we have the picture graphic, which is used uh, as the name suggests to, uh, to display any pictures. Um, there is this category user objects here, but um, we have never used it. So um, one more thing that I do is right click here, click on the palette man uh, manager and just uncheck the user objects. It's only a little bit of space that you win, but you can move this down to once again see more of the of the properties here because you will spend a lot of time here. On the lower left, you have the output window from the projector tool where here you see the last entry button one object is being created. So you will just see as a list um, what the projector tool has done. Lastly, on the bottom, you have your variable view. Um, you will use this quite often because here you have a quick overview of all the variables in your project. You see that the list is already pretty full. Um, these are the predefined variables that you find in every project uh, right after the creation. Um, they're mainly used for interacting with the hardware. You have a variable to control the backlight, the multicolor LED, um, and so on. Many different things, the, the inputs, the outputs, but also things like visibility or alarms and beeper. Uh, but you can also create your own. I will hide all these predefined variables here. And here you have with one button created a new variable. You can rename it here. Um, for any other changes, you need to right click and then go edit in variable manager. Here you can also change the data type, the default value and any other things. Also, you have once again events here, a very important one on value change. Um, here you can execute a script whenever the value of any variable changes. This is a very powerful tool. Well, that's basically it for the overview of the projector tool. Now get started working.